All right, so I have a 186F diesel engine and it is on a uh, old 1964 wheel horse tractor. Um, I've had this engine roughly a year. Great, amazing engine. I have nothing but praise to say about it. Wonderful engine. Um, I run a little chin rater on the front of it at times so that I have kind of set up. Anyways, the only negative thing I have to say about this engine is the rope start system on it is garbage. So uh, I believe it was the fifth or sixth time I started the engine, I broke the rope starter. I kept repairing it myself. Uh, finally, it broke to where I couldn't even really repair it very well. And it's just, in my opinion, garbage. So I decided to convert this to electric start. I ordered a kit from Ally Express. Um, took about a month to get here. It was. I think all together shipping and purchase cost was $229 uh, and um, I just kind of wanted to make a little video to show people how that's done the installation of that so you have a magneto that you well let me rewind here you got to take it apart first so there's gonna be four little 10 millimeter bolts that the uh, this housing comes off with okay so that you just pull that off The flywheel, I had a 27 millimeter uh, nut that held that on, and I had to take that off with my impact wrench, impact gun, Harbor Freight right there. Um, and then a three jaw puller pulled the flywheel. So there's that. Now, uh, to assemble this, first off, you have a magneto that. The kit I bought did not come with any bolts. Be aware of that. You may need to buy your own bolts, but I had to buy my own. Um, be careful not to pull the threads out of the aluminum block. I would recommend the longest bolts you can get for that. I also did not go with um, shoulder bolts or lock washers or anything because I'm trying to keep the bolt head height low um, so that it doesn't impact in here. Uh, I Loctited it all together with thread lock blue, um, so hopefully nothing will back out. But magneto goes on, three bolts hold it in place. There was supposed to be a retaining clip in the kit. It did not come with the retaining clip that was supposed to be in there, so I kind of made my own um, out of a, just a little piece of sheet metal clamp I had. I cut it and fabricated my own. So there's a little pin right here on the block that the clip that is supposed to be in the kit would hold so the clip couldn't rotate, and then it bolts in again with thread locker uh, and that just keeps this wire from backing out and hitting the flywheel and ripping the wire so that's there this magnetic uh, housing assembly that's going to spin with the flywheel is held on by three bolts they are recessed head bolts uh, there so you need these little recessed heads and all I could find was Phillips head, so that's what I got. So um, they're in there again. I Loctited them in. Now, before I put that on, I put the flywheel in my house freezer, and I put the ring gear in my house oven at 265 degrees, both for about 40 minutes. Um, took them both out, wearing rubber, leather gloves, the ring gear slipped right onto the flywheel, dropped down all the way to full shoulder depth, and within, I want to say five seconds, it was locked on solidly. Uh, so once it, once the fly, the, yeah, once the flywheel starts to expand and this begins to cool and shrink, they lock together. It's just a interference fit. So then they are locked. You, you're not getting that back off. So you only have one shot to do that. Don't mess it up. These ring gear, the ring gear here, these have a uh, a bevel on them that needs to be facing this way. That's important. Otherwise, the starter motor may not engage the gear correctly. So make sure your bevel is facing up. But that was quick and easy. It was just I froze the starter. Or I sorry, I froze the flywheel for a little bit, and I heated the ring gear in my oven for a little while at 260 
degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and they just, I mean, they dropped together. I was expecting to have to pound that on with a wooden block and a mallet and it, no, it just was just slipped right on and then locked solidly in about five seconds. Um, so there's that. And then that's going to go as keyed, obviously. You got a key, you got a keyway. That's pretty simple. Um, just put that on carefully so that you don't damage the magnets or damage the magneto. You don't want to hurt any of these coils. That's important. Um, and let me slide that on real quick. Okay, so that's back on, and I got my impact socket on there, but I'm not going to tighten it up right now. Um, the only thing I found, any documentation that I could find about installing this, said to tighten this very tightly with an impact wrench. So I don't know what the torque spec is, but apparently very tightly with an impact wrench. Um, when I took this flywheel off, my three-jaw puller, I hooked it into these holes and I applied pressure. I was going to tap it lightly with a wooden mallet to get it to come loose and it actually popped off before I got my wooden mallet up to it. However, I noticed that this magnetic assembly um, kind of blocks those off. So I think once you retighten that up, uh, getting a three-jaw puller back in there to take it off might be a pain in the butt. You might have to come in this way. Anyways, that's besides the point. So. Over here, I have already installed my starter motor. Um, I use shoulder bolts for that. I bought them. Again, the kit was supposed to come with bolts and it did not. It came with no bolts. And so I had to go to my hardware store and buy some. Um, so starter motor's on there. I bolted it in place. You run your yellow wires from your magnetic assembly down down along underneath I ran it underneath the bracket this white plastic cap here that come that is attached to those wires that comes unattached and do not attach that until you put these through they won't fit through the hole right there the hole in the engine block for the wires to go through if this plastic piece is on the wires so leave that loose don't don't put that on um, this this plastic piece comes disconnected from the wires um, obviously you just got to clip those in they go they slide in they won't back out and then uh, it should not matter which wire goes to which one because it's an alternator uh, so it's going to create alternating current and then it goes into this voltage regulator which is going to convert this back into DC current and send a positive out to charge your battery so the way that's going to work is it's going to send positive out of here. This positive cable connects to that, which is the only thing I didn't like about this kit is the connector came off already. It just pulled off. It wasn't crimped well. So I'm going to have to take this apart and crimp the wire into there or solder it or something. But anyway, so that should send positive power from there, from the voltage regulator up along this wire into this nice fancy little key thing that they give you. So this is a key start. Uh, once you've got it running, then that would back feed electric power. So it goes positive, goes up into the key, and then it would come back out, go down this white wire, and into your starter motor terminal here. Which then, once that's hooked up to a battery by a positive cable, then that's where the positive power is gonna go to your battery. So this is going to feed from here to your battery. So that's how you get positive from here, out of here, and then up to your key, and then back down to here, and then to your battery. So that's how that works. You have a little starter terminal that hooks up over here, and I hope that's crimped well. <laughs> um, and that's it. I mean, the kit's pretty much that. You can, it comes with these two short little battery cables that I'm not going to use because they're too short for what I'm using since I cannot put the battery here in this bay that the tractor originally had. I'm going to be putting the battery in a remote location. So I'll have to make another video about how to start this and once it's all hooked up and how it works, but 
Um, that's that. So that's pretty straightforward. You just bolt your starter on. You got a little bracket that you got to bolt in. Let's see if I can get a little metal bracket right here. That bolts onto the block. And then your voltage regulator attaches to that bracket. It's pretty, pretty simplistic kit. Nothing, nothing major. The uh, knockout that was where the starter motor goes, I'm gonna have to chunk that. Could not reuse the bolts that were in that because they were too short for the starter motor, so I had to buy my own. Um, as far as the kit goes, I think it looks all like it's pretty good quality, except these wires. These wires feel like they're cheap wires. Um, this key assembly thing, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess you're supposed to put it up here somewhere or something, but it it looks and feels cheap. Um, probably really wouldn't want to use it if I don't have to. Uh, but I think it'll work. I'm going to make another video of actually starting it with the electric kit once I get a battery just to hook it up and get it all back together the rest of the way. I just wanted to kind of give a rundown really of how to put this ring gear on this uh, flywheel and basically just how to bolt this all together because I couldn't find anything that showed me. Um, again, I would use the longest length bolts you can for the, uh, the magnet assembly and the magneto assembly um, because I think that it would be very easy to pull the threads out of the flywheel or the aluminum block in particular. Um, I use thread locker on everything, so I think that's probably important. Um, I think that kind of covers all the details. Uh, <clears throat> I'll make another video showing it start. Thank you. I hope this was helpful for anybody that needed help.